everyone, welcome to episode one of the Breaking Yarn podcast. Today is Saturday, January 23rd, 2021. My name is McKaylee. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm a wife, a mom, and a HR manager. I'm a yarn dyer, a crocheter, and knitter. Um, but I think knitting is more of my passion. I started knitting about um, 12, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, in my early 20s with my friend Vanessa. Um, her aunt was teaching us um, weekly how to read the patterns, which was very helpful. Um, and then she taught us the basic knit and purl stitch. Um, but I would say my real passion for knitting or like the obsession that came with it probably happened about five years ago. Um, we moved to our house and um, there's an app called Nextdoor and one of the neighbors had put up um, a post like, hey, come to our knit or crochet group. And I didn't really know anybody in the neighborhood, but I figured why not? It's a good way to meet new people. And I like knitting and crocheting, so. <laughs> I went to it and I was just completely obsessed and I also felt like I could try any kind of technique um, that was new to me because I felt like if I came into a problem or if I wasn't sure how to do something, one of the ladies in the group would be able to help me <laughs> and because mostly because they're better knitters than me. Um, so it helped me to try new things, start try new techniques, things I've never done before, and it really just ignited this whole passion for me. You can also blame them for my obsession with hand-dyed yarns now, and now I'm dyeing yarn. Um, so you can blame them for all of that um, obsession. Um, so I have a few finished objects, I have a few works in progress, and I have a new colorway that just came out that I wanted to share with you as well. So the first finished object that I have is my new pattern. This is my own pattern, the Lines and Vines Cowl. It is a brioche cowl pattern with garter lines. Um, on the top and the bottom and it's a completely seamless cowl so the design just goes all the way around I love this so much it just released actually on January 15th so just last weekend and I am so excited um, for how it's been received I love knitting brioche so I'm glad people are liking that too these colors are hazmat suit is the yellow Oh, and if you don't know, my yarn is inspired by the famous TV show Breaking Bad because I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and nobody was doing it. So I'm doing it because I love that show. It is so good. If you haven't watched it, I would recommend you trying it out. It, get, it can get a little intense. I don't want to sugarcoat um, how intense the show is. So, you know, if that's too much for you, like, you know, don't do it. Um, but it is a really good show if you stick around. And then if you um, stick all the way around, you can watch Better Call Saul and El Camino, the movie, the Breaking Bad movie that just released a couple of years ago. Um, but anyways, so the colorways are Hazmat Suit and the black is my new colorway, Jane Margolis. And she was Jesse's girlfriend in the show, if you know and also the daughter of the um, air traffic controller. And I don't wanna spoil anything, but if you know what that means, you know what that means. <laughs> so this pattern is available um, on my website, breakingyarn.com, on Ravelry, and on Etsy, so you can get it wherever you like to keep your purchases at. Um, and yeah, that's it. I actually knit two of them. This is the second one. I just reversed the colors. So the main color on this one is Jane Margolis and the yellow is the hazmat suit, which is the contrasting color. And these are both knit in my DK base, Swish DK base. So let me just see if I can, well, let me just do it one at a time here. You can get the brioche 
vines there and the garter lines. And then here's this color combo. They're both fun. I, I did two because I wanted to um, work out a design flaw that I saw on one of them. And then also um, I wanted to see if I could get two cowls out of 100 grams of yarn of each one. And I could. And I still had, um, let me move these. I still had, um, I think 14 grams and 10 grams left of the Jane Margolis. So that's pretty good. I am also doing a giveaway here on YouTube for a Lines and Vines cowl pattern. So if you would please subscribe, like this video, and comment something down below. Um, I will choose a winner before the second episode goes up so that I can announce who the winner is on the second episode. I have two works in progress. The first one, if you follow me on Instagram, at Breaking Yarn, you have probably seen this whip for a while. <laughs> I started it in September of last year for the fall garment make along with Nitty Natty and I am still working on it. It is my painting brick sweater. So I have the body completely done and I have one sleeve done and I am working on my second sleeve. I just picked up the stitches for this last night and added my first contrasting color. So that's where I am. I'm hoping my goal is to get it done by the end of the year because there is a make along happening right now called Across the Whip Line 2021. It is hosted by Teresa from Fuzzy Whatnots. Um, she is giving away weekly prizes. By the time you see this, like it's almost over. Um, but she's been giving away weekly prizes for finished objects. So if you are finishing objects that you brought into the new year with you, then you can enter into win um, prizes and there's gonna be a huge grand prize. I may have donated a few of my items for that. So be on the lookout for that. So this will hopefully be completed soon um, and I hope you're not tired of seeing it. I let me tell you about the colors that I'm using. My main color is called gray matter and these are all on my Swish DK base. So gray matter is the main color and then for my contrasting colors I have, um, here let me show you down here where it's a little bigger. I have pink teddy bear, hazmat suit which you saw in the lines and vines, Crystal Meth, Walter White, Marie Schrader. And then I just repeat those over and over. Um, this is my first adult size sweater that I've knit. Um, the other knit, uh, sweater that I've met, knit, excuse me, the other sweater that I've knit was for my daughter before she was born. Um, and that was the flax light. And I did it in my breaking, uh, breaking violet colorway. So this is very exciting to me. So I apologize <laughs> if you're tired of seeing it, but it will be done soon. Maybe I can wear it on episode two of the Breaking Yarn podcast. That would be definitely a goal. And I'm gonna try to get that done ASAP on that. Okay. So my next whip is the honey striped hat. Oh, I don't think I even mentioned, this is by Stephen West. This is a pattern by Stephen West of West Knits. So I don't wanna forget that. Um, this pattern is also by Stephen West of West Knits. It's the honey striped hat. So far, I just have, let's see if I can get it to focus here. <laughs> it's not focusing. <laughs> I don't know why it's not focusing. Here we go, maybe. Kind of. There we go, kind of. <gasps> I'm sorry. And I also know it's black yarn, so that might make it a little hard. Oh, 
Okay, well, anyways, this is just the ribbing so far on the hat, and I think I have to do like six inches of it. So I just started this um, not too long ago. I did it because I was kind of at that weird lull stage with my sweater, and I couldn't just pick it up and go. I had to like start the sleeve and like bind off the sleeve and stuff like that. And also, it's getting huge, so it's hard to take in the car with me if I need to run errands or anything like that. Um, it's too big to take at this point. So I needed a something small um, that I could take with me. Um, and Stephen West gave this pattern away with the, um, what's he called? Oh, Hybrid Net Along that is happening um, until the end of the month. I haven't started any of the shawls or anything. I'm really trying to just get my sweater done so that I can do other things. And I am typically a pretty monogamous knitter. Like I try to start and finish projects before I start another project, which, you know, if you're into knitting, you know how difficult that is. And you're like denying yourself all the fun things. But, um, so I started this, I went against my rule of finishing my sweater first, but this is kind of also a good mindless type of project while you're knitting it or uh, watching a show in the evenings or anything like that. So, um, so I started that. I hope to get that done as well. And I don't really have like a deadline for that for myself, but, um, more, more focused on my sweater at this point, which I hope will be done soon. And this is um, also in my Jane Margolis colorway in my Swish DK base. <laughs> I don't know why it's not focusing as much, but that's okay. It's just ribbing, but this is actually cool ribbing. I kind of wanted to be able to show it to you because it's like a ribbing I've never done before. So that's pretty fun. And also the Painting Bricks um, sweater is also a twisted rib and I've never knit that before either. So that's really fun. I like that a lot. It's very like springy and form fitting and it just looks really nice. Like I really like the way that it looks. So, and it's fun to knit. I was thinking that um, I might forget how to regular knit <laughs> when you're doing twisted rib because you knit through the back loop and you just get so used to knit through the back loop, purl one, knit through the back loop, purl one, but. So, oh, and the bottom also has the curled over like fitted edge. This is my first time doing this and you can see like on the inside, it's not bad. I did pretty good. Um, how I approach knitting a pattern that I don't know how to knit <laughs> is I take it one, literally one line at a time in the pattern. I do not read the whole pattern because I know I'll get overwhelmed and I'll think, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do this. And then I'll get overwhelmed and I'll never start the project. But on this one, um, I didn't know how to do short rows. I didn't know how to do a twisted rib neckline. I didn't know how to do a rolled neckline. I didn't know how to do any of it, but I just literally took it one step in one line at a time. And if it says knit this many stitches, I don't knit that many stitches. What's next? Okay. And that for me kind of demystifies the pattern a little bit and kind of takes the fear aspect out of it. Um, so I really enjoy doing that and it makes me like, well, if I don't know the next step, I'll watch a YouTube video or I'll watch a tutorial somewhere. Um, I'll read about it on a blog. It's not a big deal. I'll figure it out. <laughs> everything is figure outable. I know that's a book, but everything is figure outable. So, um, even, yeah, I don't know why I'm showing you my hat again. <laughs> okay. The last thing that I wanted to show you, which you've already seen a few times now, is the Jane Margolis colorway. It just came out on January 8th. 
Jane um, is a is a really fun character. I'm not gonna spoil her or what happens to her or anything about her really in the podcast. Um, again, if you know, you know. Um, but I know that her character made a big impact on a lot of people's lives, um, even in real life, honestly. I know that Brian Cranston, he wrote a book. I can't remember the name of the book. Um, I have not personally read it, but I did read the um, kind of the foreword to the book. I'm not sure if that's the right um, thing to say, but that he um, talked about a scene that he shot with Kristen Rudder um, in that and how it impacted him. So she's a very impactful character on the show and I just love this color. I love being able to knit with this color, have neutrals along with the crazy colors that I have. So it's just beautiful. Um, I think that's it. You can follow me on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, um, at Breaking Yarn. That's my, uh, that's my handle everywhere. So anywhere you want to look for me, that's where you'll find me. Um, thank you so much for joining me today for episode one of the Breaking Yarn podcast. I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to do this again. Take care.